which dog breed is right for you. Man's best friend comes in all shapes and sizes, a direct consequence of a millennia of selective breeding. Today, there are innumerable distinct dog breeds scattered all over the world, and more are being added to the list on an almost daily basis. So how is a prospective owner to choose? Why, with the help of the following video, of course. Sit back and grab a treat as we run down some of the critical factors behind the best dog breed for you. Let's roll. Manners maketh man's best friend. Temperament should be one of the first considerations for any prospective dog parent. While every dog has a unique personality and behavioral quirks, the breed stock it generates from is still a strong indicator of how he or she will act. Because of selective breeding, some dog breeds are predisposed to certain temperaments. English Mastiffs, for instance, are gentle giants around their loved ones, but they are ready and willing to fight threats to the death. Jack Russell Terriers, by comparison, are more feisty, playful, and vocal. Temperament influences a dog's trainability, sociability, and overall compatibility with your lifestyle. Therefore, you must take time to learn how certain breeds behave. First-time dog owners with small children, for example, might opt for a furry bundle of love, like a German Spitz or a Golden Retriever. These breeds are essentially full-time playmates for you and the kids. In contrast, an evil supervillain with designs on world domination might want fierce and loyal guard dogs. Dobermans, Rottweilers, and Cane's Corso are some of the go-to options here. Now, again, this isn't to say that Rotties or Dobies can't be loving family pets, because they absolutely can. However, you may need to take extra measures to adapt a dog to these new roles. Feel the burn. The wolf, your dog's ancestor, is famed for traversing expansive territories in pursuit of nature's most athletic prey animals. It takes incredible fitness and stamina to run down elk, moose, and other wild game. Domestic dogs retain this disposition towards working out, which is why exercise is crucial. Of course, breeding and domestication have made some breeds lazier than others. As such, exercise needs vary across breeds. Belgian Malinois, for example, have to be in action every day, otherwise they'll go crazy and destructive. English Bulldogs are the direct opposite of this, and will often choose Netflix and Kibble over walks. So before choosing a breed, take a look at your lifestyle. Are you always out and about on hikes, bike rides, and hunts? Or is the two-block hop to the grocery store your idea of intense cardio? Active dogs are better suited to active people. Keeping high stamina pooches like Alsatians and Huskies indoors all day every day will leave them prone to boredom, destructive tendencies, and obesity. Likewise, overworking lazy breeds could hurt their bodies and mental health. Slowing down your jog to allow your fat bulldog to catch up may also get annoying. Noise Hours Barking is a big part of a dog's behavior that serves many purposes. It alerts owners to visitors or intruders, and also serves as a warning to said intruders. It is also a form of communication with other dogs. However, barking can also be annoying, especially when you're trying to get some shut-eye. Therefore, you need to know your desired dog breed's barking tendencies before committing. Aggressive guard dog breeds like Mastiffs and Pit Bulls tend to minimize the yapping until faced with a stranger. Collies and other herding dogs normally use barks to intimidate livestock when working. Other breeds, like Jack Russells and Beagles, will pretty much bark for any reason. The mailman, visitors, females in heat, and squirrels are just a few triggers. These breeds are also likely to kick off late-night racket orchestras with neighborhood pooches. If barking is a concern for you, take heed. You've been warned. Pampered Pooch Grooming is an essential part of dog ownership that you cannot ignore. Keeping your dog spick and span is good for his health and his chances with the ladies. Again, grooming needs vary from breed to breed. Fur length and density are among the determining factors in this regard. Long-haired breeds, like Scottish Terriers, Irish Wolfhounds, and Pomeranians, need much more frequent care than short-haired dogs. Shampooing, detangling, and haircuts are part of the deal when you get a super hairy dog. Neglecting this can lead to discomfort and illness for your pet. If you're not a fan of frequent or expensive grooming sessions, get a short-haired dog like a Bloodhound or Labrador. Such breeds only need weekly brushing and the occasional bath. That said, all dogs need regular nail and dental care. Keep her claws short and her teeth sparkling. 
Feeding the Beast Former boxing champ Mike Tyson famously feeds his pet tigers six chickens per day, with the occasional horse leg thrown in for variation. While no domestic dog eats that much, some breeds do consume a lot. You and your wallet need to be thinking about this before picking up that cute Great Dane pup. Naturally, bigger breeds have bigger stomachs to fill. A full-grown Connick Corso requires more than three pounds of food per day. That's a lot of kibble. In contrast, adult chihuahuas don't need more than 10 ounces of food per day. We highly recommend that you take this seriously because failing to meet a dog's dietary needs is tantamount to abuse. Improper diet and quantities will lead to health problems, which will cost you more. Paging Dr. Doggy Selective breeding has done a tremendous job of refining many canine strengths. Tracking, hunting, loyalty, and friendliness are but a few benefits we've reaped. However, the system is not 100% perfect, and breeding has left some breeds more prone to health problems. Cocker Spaniels, for example, are notorious for ear infections, epilepsy, cancer, and liver disease. German Shepherds and Mastiffs are known for hip dysplasia in their later years. We also have Bloodhounds and English Bulldogs, breeds prone to various eye problems. First-time owners, in particular, need to know that vet bills can get incredibly high. With consultations, drugs, operations, and therapies, a sickly dog can cost you thousands of dollars. This is why we recommend looking at low-risk breeds like Labradors, Golden Retrievers, and Pit Bulls. Of course, life happens, and no one can predict an animal's future health condition. However, picking a low-risk breed will go a long way in saving you from heartache and crazy vet bills. We also recommend buying from officially recognized breeders. Backyard puppy mills are notorious for shortcuts like incestuous bloodlines, growth hormones, improper diets, and incomplete inoculations. A puppy mill pooch might seem cheap, but the future costs may be astronomical. Room to Maneuver Dogs are fun-loving creatures that enjoy stretching their legs and running around. As such, prospective owners must be aware of the space they have to work with. Do you have a garden that a dog can play in? Or are you in a high-rise apartment building? Physical space ties in with the need for exercise and mental well-being. Breeds like Collies and Boar Bulls are best suited to life on farms where they can roam and herd livestock. Life in a small apartment would be torture for such breeds, especially if walks and outings are lacking. Small breeds like French Bulldogs and Chihuahuas are more comfortable in smaller homes and can easily access their inner wolf by scurrying down the halls. If you want a space-loving dog without the space, you must commit to regular exercise. Cost of Friendship Lastly, we have, arguably, the main consideration, money. While a dog's love is purely unconditional, its acquisition and upkeep are not. Costs of dog ownership are spread across the initial purchase price and the costs of feeding, grooming, training, and the vet. Let's not forget toys and accessories. Prices for puppies vary greatly. If you're lucky, you can get a free puppy from friends, family, or your own pregnant dog. However, if you're buying, the cost will be subject to several factors. The breed, age, training level, and inoculation status are but a few. All in all, prices can range from $300 to well over $10,000. Breed, in particular, can affect the price because some breeds are more in demand than others. This may be because of the rarity or purpose of breeding. For example, a husky puppy in Miami will cost more than one in Siberia because of its rarity. Specific lineage, or pedigree, can also differentiate prices between two dogs of the same breed. If one pup is descended from a recognized American Kennel Club champion, it will be more expensive than pups that aren't. The cost of food depends on the kind of food you serve and how much the dog eats. Some owners prefer to serve meat instead of kibble, which tends to be more expensive. The cost of grooming depends on whether you enlist pros or DIY. DIY may be cheaper in the long run, but you must incur the cost of clippers, shampoos, towels, toothbrushes, and gels. There is also a potential time cost if you groom your dogs yourself. Professional groomers will save you time, but they might not be so kind to your wallet. Costs primarily depend on the level of work needed and your location. Vet costs vary greatly as well. However, you can minimize them by giving your dog a healthy and active lifestyle. Frequent checkups are also important for nipping potential issues in the bud.